Cleaning and adjusting my Stuart 5A steam engine part 1. The sticky oil residue on steam engines can become a problem over time and after four years this one needs a clean as well as some minor adjustments. This particular Stuart 5A is one of my favourites as I built most of it. And this is the one that I reluctantly sold and then bought back. And it's been stood as an ornament for about three years. And a lot of the oil has gone very gummy and sticky. Before I start, I need to remove the bottom half of one of the eccentrics. And this was a very fiddly job, mainly due to the position of the bolts against the eccentric itself. Having a small spanner that's a tight fit on the bolt is not helping either. But by patiently undoing the bolts, the bottom half of the eccentric is now loose. I haven't removed the bottom half of this eccentric strap just to clean it, although it's useful to show just how sticky the oil residue is. In some places, this oil residue feels like a sticky varnish. I definitely need to clean this off and bring the engine back to the way that it looked when I built it. The reason for removing the bottom half of the eccentric strap is to get this grub screw out. It was no longer possible to tighten this grub screw fully using an allen key for two reasons. One is the allen key was a bit worn and the end of the grub screw was a bit worn. This clip shows the movement and I didn't want to end up with the grub screw stuck in the eccentric shave. So here I'm changing it for a new one. I'm using the ball end of the allen key to fit the grub screw then I turn the allen key round to tighten it up. And before doing this, I ground away the worn part of the allen key at this end. Now it's time to get back to the cleaning. I found Scotch-Brite to be very ineffective at removing this sticky old oil. I could dismantle all the parts and put them in my ultrasonic cleaner, but I really don't have time to do that. After a while, the lower part of the eccentric strap was looking better. But using the Scotch-Brite method didn't make it 100% clean. So I have a better idea. I'm going to use some wet or dry sandpaper and some WD-40. This will get rid of the oil. This is a piece of 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper and it's not too coarse and gives a very good finish. And using WD-40 as a lubricant makes a sandpaper cut a lot better. For the fiddly bits though, I didn't want to round the edges and that's why I'm using a screwdriver point to remove the oil in the corners. I'm using the kitchen roll to clean up the part and remove all the residue from the WD-40 and gritty sandpaper mixture. Once the part was thoroughly clean, I oiled it first and refitted it to the engine. After the ordeal of removing these bolts, I decided to modify an old spanner to fit them. I have a lot of small spanners, but I could not find one that fitted these bolts. This small spanner that I modified by using my 1-inch belt sander was rusty at one end, so it's really easy to see it in a box of spanners for future use. That's one bolt tightened, now to work on the other one. By tightening the first bolt, fitting the second bolt was much easier because the eccentric strap was in the right position. I managed to screw most of the bolt home using my fingers. I just used the spanner to finally tighten it. In this clip, I'm just checking the timing to make sure that the eccentric is still in the right position and it is more or less. But I gave it a bit of a tweak anyway, so it should be okay. Now it's top tip time. For the next part of the job, I need to lay the engine on its side to adjust the big ends, but all of the oil is going to pour out of the lubricator and go everywhere, on the bench and on me and possibly on the floor. To stop this, I'm packing the lubricator tank with some kitchen roll. The first thing to do is to release the lock nuts on the bolts that hold the big end brasses in place. These split big end brasses are not actually made from brass, they're made from gunmetal. When I built this engine, I didn't really over tighten these bolts, I never do, because over tightening can distort them. To tighten the bolts in this instance, I used a spanner at one end and a socket with an extension at the other end. After the big end bolts were tightened and the lock nuts were refitted, I stood the engine in the normal upright position. Then I removed the kitchen towel that I'd put in the lubricator tank. This was a very messy job as the kitchen roll had soaked up most of the steam oil. I've already made a few videos showing this engine running on steam, so I don't really intend to run it using steam for a while. I put some standard lubricating oil into the tank, because I will be running it using compressed air.
turn the compressor right down and there's nothing showing on the gauge, but the engine still seems to run OK. If anything, the timing is slightly retarded, which is a good thing if you're going to run the engine very slowly using low air pressure. Here I'm checking the timing just to make sure that the eccentric that I fitted the new grub screw into is in the right position. This engine really does run very fast, but I like it to run slowly. The Stuart website states that this engine will give one and a half horsepower at 80 pounds per square inch. The engine is now running very sweetly. Just to make sure everything is OK, I'm going to turn up the pressure to 40 pounds per square inch and you'll see the difference. Changing direction at this speed using the reversing lever is possibly not a good idea, but it doesn't do any harm. And from a test point of view, I need to make sure that nothing drops off. In this clip, the video is not running in slow motion. This is running at a very slow speed as it's been fed with very low pressure compressed air. That's it for episode one. In the next episode, I'll be cleaning the engine using a special solvent. It's called Carbusonic and I would normally use this in my ultrasonic cleaner. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.